Hello, Tony here, and as you can tell, I am doing something a little bit different here. Um, unfortunately for all of you, you probably won't be seeing my beautiful face in this video, but you never know, we might get a little crazy here. Um, so this is basically a um, recent vinyl editions video, but I have a really nice edition that I want to show, so I'm going to try and run through these quick um, so I could get to... Um, my other new purchase um, So yeah, I'll just get down to it here um, If you can hear in the background, this is um, something else by Cannonball Adderley um, This is an odd jazz album that I've wanted for a long time um, I've seen it in a lot of different videos and I've seen it on a lot of lists of like greatest jazz records ever um, Fantastic record. I've listened to it a number of times now and I can't speak more highly of it. Um, and look at this lineup. You got Miles Davis, Hank Jones, Sam Jones, and Art Blakey, and fantastic records. And here's the back for you. Here is Flying Lotus, um, his EP, um, Pattern and Grind World. Um, I really like this, but this is really different for me. I decided to pick this up because I'm really curious about his. Um, Cosmogramma LP. I've heard so many good things about it, but um, I'd call this like a electronic hip hop jazz sounding. It's very different. Um, I'm sure there's a better description of it, but for me, I've only listened to this a few times and I really like it. It's very different for me, and <laughs> um, I love that album art too. Check that out. But um, whoops. But yeah, I like it a lot. So. I'll probably pick up Cosmogramma. So, there you go. Here we have Harry Nielsen, um, Nielsen Schmielsen, which is an um, absolute classic. Um, I've wanted this for a long time, but every copy I came across was just beat. Um, this one, as you can see, has some ring wear, but the vinyl is absolutely clean and plays perfectly, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, bought it on eBay for just a few dollars and the seller, a woman, actually sent me two LPs for free. Um, one was a Santana LP and one was um, um, Grand Funk um, and the album was um, Phoenix. But they're both in kind of poor condition so I have to examine them a little bit more to see if they're even playable but still I guess it was nice she sent me something free. Anyway. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the tune "Without You" uh, and even "Coconut," but the album I'm more, the song I'm more curious about, or the song that I bought this for, I should say, is "Jump in the Fire," which is a fantastic tune, um, great rocker. Um, really sad story about this guy. He basically drank himself to death. This was a smash, and um, the producer Richard Perry basically said to Harry Nielsen, "Look." Stop drinking, and we'll make a huge album, and they did. This came out, and it was just smash it. And um, the next time around, Harry Nielsen couldn't stop drinking, and um, I don't know if Richard Perry walked away or what, or if he actually produced the album, but it was nowhere near as successful as this. But here we have Tom Waits, The Early Years, Volume 2. I purchased Volume 1 maybe about a month ago. And uh, I liked it a lot, so I picked up Volume 2. Uh, and on this, it has a few more songs I was familiar with. I uh, Hope I Don't Fall In Love With You, which is killer ballad type tune, I guess. Old 55, which I believe the Eagles covered. Uh, and Grapefruit Moon, another fantastic song by him. So, there you go. Here we have Pavement's Terror Twilight. I haven't gotten a chance to listen to this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I like Slanted Enchanted so much that I wanted to check out more by them, so here you go. Here's the back. Here we have Spaceman 3, Sound of Confusion. I absolutely love this record, I gotta say. Um, I've been wanting to check these guys out for a while now, and I'm really glad I did. Um, this album has just blew me away. Uh, very psychedelic, very um, droney as well. I put it on and I immediately thought the Black Angels and these guys were 
obviously a huge influence on them and probably a lot of other bands as well. They were around in the 80s and the um, early 90s. So there you go. Um, one member actually went on to form uh, Spiritualized, if you're familiar with them. Um, I actually ordered one of their LPs, which is on the way now, so here you go. This one, though, I picked up yesterday, and I haven't listened to it yet. Still sealed. Uh, the Perfect Prescription. Um, I believe this one, this the Sound of Confusion, might have more percussion on it than this. I'm not sure, though, so I've yet to listen to it, but I'm really looking forward to it. Here we have Bonnie Prince Billy, um, his album Beware. Um, I recently or showed... Um, um, Viva Las Blues by Palace Music and Dan in Canada actually commented and said check out Beware by Bonnie Prince Billy little did I know that Will Oldham who is in Palace Music um, is actually Bonnie Prince I should say Bonnie Prince Billy is actually Will Oldham and I had no idea about that I've seen this guy's albums all over the place he's got a lot of them it seems like um, but yeah I've listened to this a few times now and I like it a lot uh, I'm definitely going to check out more by him. Um, this is on, um, um, what's the, Drag City, that's right. And their LPs are usually pretty fairly priced, so check out their website. they got a lot of great stuff on there. There you go. Here we have another absolute classic. I love this record. This really reminds me of high school and a little bit after, um, although it was released probably 10 years before I was in high school. Um, came out in 1989. This is Beastie Boys, Paul's Boutique. This is their second album, and it was actually a flop when it was released. It didn't sell well, which is really strange because I think it's like their best record. Um, songs like Shake Your Rump and High Plains Drifter and Eggman and Sound of Science and that. Actually, the whole second side, too. The whole thing is great. So, this is their 20th anniversary repressing of it. And it's actually, it's one LP, but the packaging is, like, so thick here that I can't even get it into a sleeve. But I'll figure out something, I suppose. Fantastic record. I'm not even the biggest hip-hop guy. Uh, I do like a number of rap artists, but um, this is probably one of my favorites, and this is probably very influential as well, so check this out if you don't have that. Here we have the Sonics, their sophomore album, Boom. Um, the Sonics were a garage rock band, like a precursor to punk. Uh, if you have satellite radio, Sirius Satellite Radio or XM, check out Little Steven's Underground Garage. They play the Sonics a lot. Um, you might be familiar with their tune from the first album, uh, Psycho or The Witch. Um, but this is a great album here, and I highly recommend checking them out if you're into garage rock. And These guys are based out of um, Tacoma, Washington, Seattle, and uh, again, very influential. Here we have my first um, Brian Eno LP, first one I've ever owned, uh, Another Green World, which I hear is a fantastic record. Um, it's on a lot of lists for like best albums, best indie albums, things like that. This is a Japanese pressing. Um, and his albums seem kind of hard to come by. I found this in the record shop. and I don't know if all Japanese pressings come with the um, Mobile Fidelity um, sleeve there. But um, really nice though, nice pressing. I've yet to listen to it, but I could just say the packaging itself is pretty nice, so there you go. And here we have, if you don't recognize this cover, um, which isn't that bad to look at, I suppose, the uh, Pixie Surfer Rosa. Um, I actually bought this a few weeks ago, and for the life of me, I couldn't remember if I showed it in a video. I tried to go back and look, so and I couldn't find it. So if I did show it before, my apologies, but it's such a classic that I figured yeah, I'll show it twice. Um, great, great album, produced by Steve Albini, and... If you like the Pixies, or if you're looking for something different to listen to, this is a fantastic record. So, all right, so there are my recent vinyl purchases. Um, yesterday, I bought a brand new turntable, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. Well, I'm really excited about it, I should say, because I can't listen to it yet. I am actually still waiting for my preamp to come in the mail. 
Um, I've actually never needed a preamp, so. But this, I guess, is my first, what you would call, um, audio file turntable. It's a Rega RP1, and it's actually their replacement for the P1. Um, I guess there were some problems with that, and um, so this is their replacement. And it's actually going to replace the R, uh, the P2 as well. This one actually sounds better than the P2, they say. Um, it's actually, with the improvements they've made on it, it's actually more comparable to the P2. Um, this sells everywhere online. I've seen for like 450 bucks or 445 or something. I was able to get this for about 375 um, through some kind of deal that my local um, record store worked out. They actually don't sell audio equipment, but they did have a few of these. So I went for it. I've been looking to upgrade for a long time now, and I couldn't really, from the research I did and for the price, I, I guess I just couldn't beat it. Um, really, really nice. I like it a lot. I like, I mean, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, to me it's like a work of art and I can't wait till I could actually listen to it and enjoy it. Um, so there's something interesting I wanted to show you too um, that came with the packaging of this. Um, something about cleaning your records. They, it comes with a sheet with like a bunch of little tips about using your turntable. Let me read this to you real quick. It says, do not use any record cleaner that works while the record is playing or any cleaners that use water or solvents. If you keep your records stored in their sleeves, avoid touching and playing, touching the playing surfaces and keep all water and fluids away. Cleaning should not be necessary. Do not worry about visible dust on the record surface. This is brushed aside by the stylus, and any that collects on the stylus can be easily blown away. In general, record cleaning is overdone and, sh and one should not believe all the claims made by record cleaner, cleaner manufacturers. I just thought that that was so odd. Um, and it absolutely goes against everything I've always read and believed about records. Uh, I don't know how much I believe it, but I don't know. Maybe if any of you guys have some thoughts on that. I was always told that dust on a record is the worst thing and that's what causes all the pops and things so who knows um, I am probably going to be either purchasing the upgrade kit for this um, either that or just buying different components that I want to upgrade um, eventually the cartridge as well this comes with the um, what is it the Ortif Ortifon however you pronounce that um, stylus, which I believe comes with the Project Debut 3 as well. Um, so yeah, I will probably upgrade that eventually. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this, and once I get it up and running, maybe I'll make another video, or at least just let you know about it. Um, and yeah, please guys, any thoughts, uh, or questions, I guess, but any comments, please leave them, let me know, and again, thanks for watching, and close this here. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and uh, take care.